Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. I'm setting up the Voxel Lab Polaris resin 3D printer, and before I finish the setup and start my very first set of prints, I wanted to cover something very basic with everyone about resin 3D printers when it comes to leveling the build plate, the home functionality, and the Z offset, because I think that Z offset is really causing a bit of confusion for folks out there. I know it confused me at first, why it wasn't working the way I was expecting it to. So pretty much all resin 3D printer, build plate leveling, homing, Z set offsets, function for the most part the same. Obviously this could differ from printer to printer, but for the most part, what you need to do is put the build plate onto the 3D printer. You're gonna loosen up the bolts, however that might be that's on the printer. This one has a four bolt holding mechanism here. It might be a ball joint design like you see on the Elgu Mars 3D printers. You're gonna also need a piece of paper when it comes to leveling, and that's about it. So this is nice and loose, which is great. We're gonna put the piece of paper in here and we're gonna go into the menus under tools, manual, home. And again, that step process, the naming conventions might change slightly from printer to printer, but in general, all of them have some sort of a tools function. And then under that subsection, when you wanna move the build plate, there is a home option. That's gonna home the 3D print. That's gonna home this build plate all the way down until it triggers the end stop. So for the most part, what you can typically do is like this right here, I can use one set of hands here to hold the build plate down. With this piece of paper, I can see that it's nice and firm. It's not falling out, it's not sliding out at all. And I can just come in here and tighten up the build plate. I typically, for these four bolt designs here, I go in one corner and then go in the opposite corner here. Also a little easier to do this when you're front facing the printer, not top down or from the back. Double check that it's still nice and firm, that one side doesn't feel looser than the other. If it does, then you're gonna wanna re-level that. You're gonna loosen those back up and make sure to just hold them down. Now, for the most part, for most printers, this is all you ever really need to do. And then I can go back through the process of backing out, or actually I can go back and lift the set back up. You wanna be very careful when you're lifting or lowering the build plate, because you can do that in increments of 10 millimeter, one millimeter, or 0.1 millimeter. Uh, so here I'm doing it in 10, just so I can lift it up a little bit higher. Take the piece of paper out. I'm gonna home the printer again, and it should work just fine here. Perfect. Now if you get a grinding sound in any of that process there, that means you need to re-level your build plate. And you might think that you need to reset your Z offset, but the Z offset has nothing to do with homing the build plate. When you click the home button, regardless of how you've leveled your build plate or not, it is always going to go down all the way until it triggers that end stop to go off. That's how it's going to know if it needs to stop or not. That's why with things like the Wham Bam Flex Plates, for some printers, there are little shims that you can 3D print and install to give you a little bit of extra clearance there because when you install the Flex Plate, it's gonna cause that grinding sound and that helps avoid that in those situations. So I have my build plate homed and I wanna show you what the Z offset actually does. So here, I'm gonna come in and select, I don't know, this one millimeter, actually no, you know what, I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna select the 10 millimeter and then I'm gonna press up once. So this is perfectly flat right now. It's perfectly flat against the screen, it's perfectly leveled. I'm gonna press up once. So it's lifting up 10 millimeters. I'm gonna back out of this menu and click set Z equals zero. What that means, and here I'm gonna click confirm, is that when I start my 3D print, that's going to be the starting point for the 3D print. So let me further explain this. If I go back into this manual menu, this is where I think I see a lot of confusion happening. If someone says, uh, oh, I've set the Z offset, and when I now home, it's not doing anything. Well, yeah, the home is always, it's always going to go back to that Z end stop. It doesn't care what you set the Z offset to. That's not coming into play when you home the print bed here. Maybe there's a better name than home that this should be called. 
But if I come in now, actually, let me lift this back up just so we can see this a little bit better. I'm not gonna put the vat in with resin or anything like that. I just wanna start a print. So here I have a file that I've loaded up into the printer. I'm gonna hit play and it's gonna get loud here as the fans kick on. It's gonna lower the build plate all the way to that home position. So it's gonna trigger the sensor here on the side, the end stop. And because I set the Z offset to 10 millimeters up, here we're gonna see it lift up 10 millimeters from the build plate and then it's going to start the printing process. Ta-da. So that's what the Z offset is for, is if you need to have your starting position of your 3D prints higher than the home position for whatever reason. Maybe you have a really thick FEP sheet that you're using in your VAT. That's a good way of getting around it, of, of using the Z offset functionality. Now, since I just screwed up the Z offset, what I'm gonna do is come back under tools, manual, and home, and it's gonna rehome the build plate back down to the bottom, and all I'm gonna do is reset the Z end stop to, or the Z, the Z equals zero to whatever the home position is. So here it's gonna come down to the bottom, it's gonna trigger the end stop. I'm gonna go back one menu and Click set Z equals zero and confirm. And that's it. Now all I need to do is lift this back up so that I can get the VAT in and start my 3D print. All right, print completed. Let's fire up something bigger. And while this is printing, I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is none other than Nico Industries. One of my favorite places to get 3D printable files when it comes to cosplay related things. I'm printing Nico's Spider-Man main files, which if you've seen Into the Spider-Verse, you'll know exactly what this is referring to, but it's a different take on it featuring Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield. Nico Industries is one of my absolute favorite places to find 3D printable files when it comes to cosplay or pop culture related things. Not only can you find great files for 3D printing, but if you make your own 3D printable files, you can sell those directly on Nico's platform as well. Plus, Nico has a fantastic Patreon, which will provide you with a bunch of different 3D printable files each and every month. If you're interested in more information about any of Nico Industries services, you'll find links down below in the video description. Thanks again to Nico for sponsoring today's video. All right, so we've got all the prints cleaned up. I do need to remove the supports on these larger prints and I wanted to test out something that I saw online that I, apologies, cannot remember who the heck posted about it, but I have to try it out. I dug this out of our basement storage area. <laughs> This is a really old crock pot that has not been used in probably three plus years, it's just been sitting in this box. I'm gonna repurpose this, fill it with water, and then use it to heat up the support so that they more easily remove. And then I can just have a standing heatable support removal unit on hand here in my printing room. Well, that's the idea anyways. And I'm gonna set this on the low setting here. I don't want it to get too hot. I don't wanna warp the 3D print. I just wanna get the water warm enough that the supports will just break right off. All right, this is sat for about 10 minutes here. Put our print in and let it sit for just a few to help loosen up all these supports. All right, so as you can see, I've got everything assembled here for the Spider-Man MAME diorama. That was all printed here on the Voxel Lab Proxima in white resin. I ended up applying a little bit of primer, black primer and gray primer to the figures and then the background pieces. I printed the base on my CR10S4 because it's the largest FDM printer that I had and I wasn't about to try and print this base in resin. But I did want to take a quick second to mention about the crock pot thing. I posted a short on here and got a whole lot of feedback on that. One, it's a fantastic way if you don't want to continually refill your bucket of water and you have an extra crock pot laying around, go ahead and use that like I did. I didn't go out and buy one. I had one that's been sitting here in the basement for like four plus years. So it's a great way for me to just maintain a bucket full of water that I can just heat up and reuse and eventually toss out at some point or another. Uh, the second thing, 
with that is someone else mentioned, and I thought it was a fantastic idea, that you can preheat your resin using that as well. And again, you could still do the same thing with a bucket of water. No need to use the crock pot. I was just sharing something that someone shared with me that as I thought it was a pretty interesting idea and concept. But hopefully this video helped explain the difference between homing and the Z offset functionality on your resin 3D printers and the process for bed leveling. I mean, it's all intertwined together there. And I know there can be a little bit of confusion when it comes to that Z offset and how it's applied. So hopefully this helped clarify that a bit there when it comes to leveling and getting your prints up and running. Again, I just leveled that the one time and ran off and printed all of these things on this machine. I'll be doing a full review of this machine early next week. I've got a bunch more things that I need to print on it before I'm ready for that. Uh, overall, it's a pretty interesting and uh, thumbs up so far for me on this resin 3D printer. Hey, thanks again to Nico for sponsoring today's video. Again, if you're interested in more information about the files that he offers, you'll find links down below. I want to say thank you for watching. If you have questions, further questions on the bed leveling or homing or the Z offset, let me know down below. Or if you have further tips around that and want to just share that with other members of the community, it's a good place to share it down in the description below. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.